last year, 2018. I'm one of the nominees for the Singaporean of the Year Award. Why would a normal looking teacher like me be nominated for such an award? It's because of my student. Because my student achieved something that no other school in Singapore have ever achieved before. Hi everyone, my name is Eming. I'm one of the 32,000 teachers in Singapore. Just like a teacher, we all have different way of teaching the kids. But as a teacher, we have one thing in common, and that is we want to do great things with the kids, with the students. Okay, before I start, I want to ask you all, do you have any idea how does the world's largest robotics finals competition look like to you? Or rather, have you ever been to a robotics competition before? This is very important because in order for all of you here to appreciate what will I be sharing with you, you need to have a sense, you need to have the feel of how does a robotics finals world championship look like to you. So in order to help you to visualize that, I prepared a video for you, a one minute video. I will play that video and then I will explain to you as clearly, as concise, in the most simplest form of language I, that I can find so that you will know first how does the world's largest robotics finals look like to you. Are you ready for the video? Yes. As you can see down here, there are four robots moving around. So, which means that it was a two versus two robot. And the student need to learn how to function in teams. What is the challenges of this game? The match or rather the game, can be very unpredictable. It's very random. There are objects all around you, robots all moving around you. You take a closer look. If you were to be one of them and you're not well trained, fear, tension, stress, all will come in. To be honest, to win a match like this, you must be able to first, you must be able to read the game well and fast. You must be able to make that decisive decision in the speed of second. You must make the right move, no mistake. And to be honest, if you want to do all this, you must have a high mental state of focus. Okay, to win one world champion, you need to have 15 months of hardcore training. And I have raised four world champions, 2012, 2015, 2017 and 2013. And that is 60 months, 6-0. Six 60 months of my 11 years of teaching. Some of my colleagues ask me, why do I have to do this? I'm paid not to do this. I'm paid to teach math and design. In case you're wondering, am I a math teacher? I hope I look like one. I am a math teacher. <laughs> so why am I doing this? Why must I burn? or rather sacrifice my night camping in school? Why must I sacrifice my weekend? Why must I sacrifice my family time? Because both me, myself and the student, we have one common vision, and that is we strive to become the next champion. I'm going to share with you two very amazing and inspiring stories, Rebecca Young and Benedict Tan. This is Rebecca Young, a very sweet looking lady. Before I jump to a cover story, let me share with you two of the beliefs that I used to have. I used to believe that it's very tough for a girl to excel in a mere dominating field like robotics. I always think that to win that kind of competition that you just saw, I need to find a student that has the godly controlling skills. And this is Rebecca. She's one of the very few girls in my club and she don't have that godly controlling skills. To be honest, Rebecca is not good in robotics. <laughs> so, so, why am I, so why is she selected? Because I need to promote robotics to some of the girls. And most importantly, I need some girls in my club to motivate a bunch of boys. <laughs> that is why I need Rebecca. In the initial stage of the training, Rebecca doesn't make to the cut of the school team. But there's one thing that she has in her that makes her stood up. And that is she has that strong dedication 
and that strong conviction that I don't see that in most of the boys. And with that, I bring her to 2013, her first World Championship. She was in the junior team. She got trash, totally trash, 0-10. For those who doesn't watch soccer, 0-10 means you have lost 10 consecutive match. <laughs> it was awful, I can tell you that. The feeling was awful. It's like being slapped in the face for 10 times. <laughs> Rebecca made a history. I can remember that. I don't remember any of my school team doing so badly in the World Championship. I run to her, not to score her. But I can see in her eyes that she tell me that she has never in her life been so helpless before, being trashed 0-10. I throw her that golden question. I ask her, do you want to revenge? I bring her back to Singapore. I put her through that 15 months of core training, this time around together with the core team. I'm sure you're very interested to know what did I do to the student to convert this kid from a neighborhood school to a four-time world champion? What did I train with them? What food did I give to them? What supplement do I buy for them? There's no winning formula. There's only one thing. Hard work. I'm going to share with you some of the insight. What are the training that I give to them? If I were to say that to win a war, you need a formidable weapon, to win a championship like this, you need the best machine. And in a world like this, whereby people are always constantly innovating their design, we cannot be complacent. And one word, discipline, which means that we always review our design. We always go back to drawing board. And when we go back to drawing board, that means that we have to dismantle the robot, we have to rebuild the robot. And when you rebuild that robot, the feel is different. You must go and retrain the game, and programmer must reprogram the robot. It's not easy. In a span of 15 months, we literally do this like four to five times. It's very tiring. And I can tell you, ladies and gentlemen, this is one of the best way to train perseverance. I throw them into matches that I carefully design, just to instill fear, instill tension, instill stress into them. I play my game with them. I love to play my game because I want them to be able to anticipate what the opponent will be doing. I want them to think ahead of the opponent. I throw them into matches that I created to become, to have the unjust condition. Like for example, I made Rebecca do a 1v2 match or even 1 versus 3 match just to make her develop the fighting spirit and the resilience. And that is just not enough. I make them do mental calculation. To be able to win a world champ is not just good enough to, to be able to control that robot. It is just not good enough to be able to read the game and respond well. You must know at one moment how many points am I gaining, and next moment how many points am I losing. These are called situation awareness, and these are mental training. And these are life skills. These are not skills just for robotics. These are important life skills that I train and make them undergo in these 15 months. I packed Rebecca with this training for that 15 months. And this is Rebecca in 2015. I bring her back to the United States. This is her second world championship. But now she was in the core team. You look at her. This is the photograph that is taken just before the finals. She was back in the United States now, not to take revenge, but to show the world what she is capable of. She got 10-0. Can you see the amazing transformation from 0-10 to 10-0? She advanced to semi-finals, and this is the finals. She bring this August team to her, together with her in 2015. And they are so amazing. They win the tournament world champion and the robot skill world champion, August team. And to say that they are the Charlie Angel of the girls of the robotics is not an understatement because they are simply the best at the point of time. She is so good that she has been featured in this International Women's Day. You saw the thing, girl power. <laughs> I'm very inspired by her. She inspired me a lot. I got two daughters. Two girls. I want my girls to be like her. I wanted so much to put my girls in, this, in my core training. 
I told my wife. She sent me three words. Leave them alone. <laughs> Second story. A very amazing and inspiring story. Benedict Dunn. I took him back in 2010. He was a young chap. Very passionate about robotics. So passionate that I could remember that during recess time, he would come to the lab just to check on the robot. Ben spent a huge part of his four years competing alongside with me in all the major competitions. If I were to say that competing a competition is like fighting a war, then Ben, he is my five-star general. Because he's always there fighting alongside with me in all the major competitions in his four years of study. Ben have a condition. He suffered from skin eczema when he was young. During elementary school, the skin eczema has improved. It was under control. He went under control all the way. It was all well until the third year of middle school. He came back. I think it's because of the robotics. And I think it's because of the intense preparation for World Championship that triggered the eczema to come back. I saw that coming. I talked to him. I stopped him. Because I want to prevent the eczema from getting worse. But he just insists to finish off the last World Championship with me. The grease, the oil, the matter, it doesn't help the situation. I could remember the moment very clearly. Ben got to overcome the great discomfort between the finger, elbow and the neck. I got this deep sense of guilt that is because of me, my robotics, that triggered the eczema to come back. This is Ben in the fighting gear. Ben has fought with me three major world championships, but he has never won any of them. For some reason, it's always his teammate that won the championship. But that doesn't mean Ben is not a champion. In Ben, I truly saw that he redefined the meaning of champion. Why? Because in Ben, I saw the true fighting spirit in him. Because in Ben, I saw he exhibit the mind over body, that he overcome the eczema. And in Ben, I can tell you, I relearned some of the core value that I once taught him. The eczema is still with him now. Ben had left robotics. He moved on. He excelled in other aspects of his life. Just like me, he took up a STEM career, engineering career. He had he's had been doing very, very well. He scored a GPA of 3.99 out of 4. A near, a near perfect score. He's doing so well. I asked him, where is that 0.01 went to? <laughs> he told me he lost it in the presentation skills because he's just like me. We are not a good speaker. <laughs> That's an amazing story of Ben and Rebecca. Today, I'm here. I want to share with you Creating champion doesn't mean that you must win a competition. It doesn't mean that you must stop an examination. It doesn't mean that you must be number one. I want to share with you that creating champion to me is not because I won four world championship. It's because I can influence mindset. I can push boundary and I can impact the people around me. Same for Ben and Rebecca. They can also create champion because they have very amazing story to inspire the people around them. And putting all this together, I want all of you to know, ladies and gentlemen, you can also start creating champion when the work that you are doing can inspire and can impact the people around you. And last and not least, if you got what it takes to create champion, what should you do? Step in. Because once you start to step in, you can start to create champion. Thank you for your time.